You now have to play Twister just to fry onions. Passive aggressive roommates. Where do we even begin? Hi guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Joanne. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by and welcome. If you're coming back, thank you guys so much for supporting me so much to me. Everybody make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Follow my social media so you don't miss out on any banging content. I promise you, you will not regret it. So today I'm talking about house share and just the worst thing about sharing a house. Now the worst thing about sharing a house is in the name sharing. It's long. For example, if you're sharing a kitchen, you now have to sacrifice and give up being able to cook when you want and clean and uh, wash up when you want and so on and so forth. Now, the worst thing, one of the worst things in the kitchen is the fact that the oven and the hob and the stove or whatever you want to call it is not in the middle of the kitchen. If it was in the middle of the kitchen, do you know how much easier things would be? Because when you get to the kitchen now, because they've pushed the oven and the hob against the wall, that's the setup. When you get to the kitchen and there's somebody else using the front two stoves, you now, it's like playing Twister. You now have to play Twister just to fry onions, just to fry sausages or to heat up your food. Sharing a bathroom. But in my opinion, sharing a bathroom is a madness. How can you have a public toilet in your own house? And obviously the point about you can't even use the toilet whenever you want. You can't even use the bathroom whenever you want. Sometimes you've got to get up extra early so you can beat someone um, to the bathroom or to the toilet or you're going to get late to work. Or there's always that one weirdo who has like a one hour morning routine and they're always making people late and they're inconsiderate. So you have to make sure you're in the bathroom before them. It's just the inconvenience of it all. Now, the next point is sharing rooms. Nothing has ever gobsmacked me or flabbergasted me more than to hear in this England, the home of the great British pound sterling, there are university students, there are people sharing rooms with people they have never met before. People sharing rooms with complete strangers. Do you know the kind of vagabonds this UK has produced? Do you know the kind of people this UK has come out with? Do you know the kind of primitive... Do you know? This is just scary. Do you not fear anything? Do you not fear anything to start sharing a room with somebody you've never met, you've never lied, laid eyes on, you don't even know the name until you enter the room and you see them on the day? And you know the maddest thing is yeah, the maddest thing is yeah, the way uni advertise it. I was reading on one uni website. Oh yeah, we have our twin rooms. These are the cheapest rooms. Excuse me, this room is costing you your life. You're telling me the cheapest room. Is your life the cheapest thing? Because really and truly, you could be sharing with anybody. You could be sharing with anyone. What even further added to my distress, I'm not even sharing rooms is that when these university accommodation takes students in they don't even do a dbs check they don't even do a disclosure and a barring service check they do not do it <laughs> this is absolutely gobsmacking this is absolutely confusing this is absolutely bewildering this is shocking this is every negative emotion you can come with, with in the diction oh yeah it's the cheapest room madame if your life is the cheapest thing if your life is cheap if your life is the the cheapest thing you have to offer then okay it is the cheapest room but if your life is not the cheapest room the, but if your life is not the cheapest thing you have to offer it is the most expensive a twin room in university or a twin room anywhere is the most expensive thing ever it is costing you your life first of all you can't even bring to your room whoever you want at whatever time you want after a certain time the lights have to be off after a certain time you can't even be using your laptop or your bright light or anything after a certain time you have to be crawling into your room so you don't wake up the other person and what's even worse what if you get put in to share a room with somebody who snores where do we go from there what are we doing because you don't know this person to be fair there's a spectrum on one end of the spectrum the soft side there's that person who snores on the other end there's the psycho so to be fair you could be put with anyone next problem with sharing a house or sharing a yeah sharing a house is passive aggressive roommates oh my passive aggressive roommates where do we even begin because it's like in this world that we live in so, you know what i blame you know what i blame for passive aggressive roommates i blame social media because people don't have the confidence to directly go and speak to anybody they now have resorted in other means of talking seriously 
I blame social media. I blame the virtual world. It has ruined us and has produced what they call passive aggressive roommates. Because you have weirdos. Yeah, let's start on these because passive aggressive roommates are weirdos in my opinion. Because you have these weirdos, yeah, who you will go and tell them, yo, I have a problem with the way you left the plates in the sink. I have a problem with the way you didn't clean up after yourself or whatever it may be. And it'd be like, so this is, let, 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 let's reenact the scenario. Right, so when I turn, you'll know. Okay, cool. Hi, Sheila. I was just wondering if you could um, clean up all your plates in the sink because I'm trying to wash and they're kind of piling up. I do, and yeah, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. I get the, uh, the dishes washed very soon. All right, thank you, Sheila. That's great. Now I'll be able to wash my dishes. All right, so now two days have passed. You get to the kitchen. The plates are still not in the sink. At this point, you are tired. You let one day pass, and then two days pass, the dishes are still in the sink. All right, sorry, I forgot about it. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow, no problem. And the next day, and they're still not done. Now you have to escalate things when you didn't need to. Now you have to start putting their dirty plates in front of their room. Or if you're in Leicester, you shit in front of their door. But like, it's just annoying. That to me is passive aggression. There's no way you have forgotten when someone has reminded you twice to wash your plates. Absolute myth. Absolute myth. You're lying. And there's always a flatmate like this, man. Always a flatmate. And you know what it is as well? They act all innocent and vulnerable and whatever. So you don't keep going up to them and tell them to wash their stuff or to do their things. They act all like, oh, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And it never ends up getting done. And then when you do put plates or dishes in front of their room, this is the conversation that follows. Listen, Sheila, I told you three times, yeah? Please get my dishes, get the dishes done so I can use the sink. That was your third warning and I'm not asking you again. So I've decided to put the dishes in front of your room. Hang on mate, don't you get aggy with me. There's no need for you to do that. I told you I'll clean this shit up. And when I said I'm gonna clean my shit up, I'm gonna clean my shit up. It's been three days, Sheila, and you haven't cleaned the dishes and you expect me to wait for you. That's, to be fair, it get there's worse pa there's worse passive aggression than that. To be fair, there's those weirdos, yeah, who make anonymous reports to the reception. They don't want to directly talk to you or anything. They go to the reception. Let's say it could be regarding anything. It could be regarding noise. It could be regarding visitors or anything. Now I'm a human, yeah. If I have a problem with anything my flatmate has done, I'll directly tell them. There's no problem. We're people, and I expect the same back. Do you understand? Like on a respectful thing, of course. I'll just tell them, yo, like, can you calm down with the noise or calm down with the visitors? No problem. And then there's another type of passive aggression, yeah, where roommates will do stuff not because it benefits them or any in any way, but because it inconveniences you. For example. Let's say you've had, a, this is a very stupid argument, but let's say you've had an argument of the way that the toilet seat is left. Maybe you like the toilet seat up and they like the toilet seat down. Now you've told them kindly, can you please leave the toilet seat like this, innit? They've said no, you've disagreed in that department, fine. It's natural, innit, because you can't really argue, that like, you can't really decide how the toilet seat gets left. Now, because you've addressed to them that you want the toilet seat up or down or whatever it is, they don't like that. Now, every time you go to the toilet, yeah, you finished doing whatever you're doing and you've left the seat how you like it. You step out of the toilet and you find that roommate waiting for you just to go into the toilet, reverse the way you've put the seat and get out. They don't even want to use the toilet. They just want to be an inco in inconvenience to everybody or to you, sorry. Or whenever they find that the toilet seat is not the way they like it, they just lift it up or pull it down or whichever way it is just so that they can piss you off to show you I did not listen to you because hey, mate the pettiness you find in uni when it comes to passive aggression or not even in uni but everywhere hey it is comical it is funny it, it's actually so funny and you are going to meet some hell of some characters the next one and this is with all if we're talking about uni this is with everything I don't care this is with studios this is with flat shares everything but if we're talking about outside life, this is going to be with flat shares. I doubt it will be with studios. Thin ass walls. Thin ass walls. Thin. The walls are so thin, you can even talk through them. You can play Love is Blind if you wish. No, no, no. Actually, scrap that. The walls are so thin, you can even walk through them. But please, guys, I do exaggerate for dramatic effect. If you do try and walk through a wall, you will meet your demise. But the walls are thin. You can hear everything. When I say the walls are thin, the walls are thin. You can hear everything. 
you can hear every nookie and cranny all my days sometimes you hear a noise yeah coming from another room and you're questioning yourself whether that noise is within your room but really and truly it's not in your room it's just very like it's just because the walls are so thin don't think i'm exaggerating you can put on the tv in this accommodation i can put on the tv right now this is a studio someone can be walking along there they'll hear my tv i can put on the speaker this tiny tiny speaker i have play my music i can even play my music from my phone someone will be walking across the corridor and they will hear that they will hear every people can even hear you breathe they can hear everything they can even right now when i'm recording i promise you there's someone who can hear me the walls are thin they are like curtains you might as well put curtains up instead of walls because at this point walls are a waste of money the last one is the fact that you can no longer be 100 percent comfortable you can't even you can't even walk in bare feet to do whatever you're doing because if you if you try walking bare feet to be fair even in a lot of studios like everywhere in uni they, the floors collect dust a lot in it so you can't walk in bare feet but especially in a shared flat you can't unless you want to go walk and pick up all sorts of dust and all sorts of particles and all sorts of diseases you go to the kitchen by the, by the time you come back to your room, you have trench foot or you have a veruca or you have all sorts of... You. If you're lucky, you might pick up one unique dust particle, get some random illness and that illness is now named after you. Because, bro, it's dusty. It's dusty. You have to constantly be in shoes, constantly be in slides. You cannot be bare feet anywhere in, in a shed flat. Anywhere. Can't walk into the kitchen dressed anyhow or dressed how you wish like i can do in the studio but thank you guys so much for watching everybody make sure you like comment subscribe share turn on post notifications make sure you comment i want to discuss with you guys um but yeah i'll see you guys in the next video bye